My name is Emily Mithner, and I am the founder and president of NY Creative Interns, which is an organization dedicated to helping young creatives discover and then follow their dream careers. And we do all sorts of different um, educational and social programming online, as you can see, you're here now, and also in real life at uh, our HQ in New York City, New York. Um, and so uh, some other things that we do besides run these events online and offline is we have a weekly opportunities newsletter and we also have a highly, highly curated job board where we post only the best internships and entry level uh, positions in New York City, which is really exciting. Without further ado, welcome to Hustle 101, networking for college students and recent grads. And as I mentioned, for those of you who came in uh, uh, just now, my name is Emily Mithner, and I'm founder and president of NY Creative Interns, which is a group dedicated to helping young creatives discover and follow their dream careers. So what we're going to cover today are four main topics. We're going to talk about what is hustle, so what do I mean by using that word in this context? how to stand out, why going out is important, and my favorite part, which is the art of reaching out to people. So there's a lot of you in the chat tonight, so I'm going to do my best to keep my eye on the chat on the left. Uh, if you do have a question, please ask it, and I will get to it at some point. Um, and if I don't answer it right away and you feel like maybe I missed it, definitely feel free to message me your question uh, more than once privately just to make sure that it gets on my radar. Okay, so defining hustle. So what does it mean to hustle in the context of networking? Number one is hustling means meeting people. If you leave this chat with anything, leave with the idea that opportunities come from people. They don't come from job boards. They don't come from, you know, random listings online. Opportunities come from people. So meeting people, especially when you're just starting off in your career, is extremely, extremely important. The next thing is to have goals and to share them. So a lot of people before they graduate might not know exactly what they want to do, might not know what they want to do in the next uh, five years, ten years, uh, what you want to be when you grow up is definitely a very difficult question, but in order to be a hustler and start hustling, it's really important to have some sort of goal for the near future and then be able to articulate that goal to the people that you're meeting. Because although you might not know what you want to do in five, ten years, especially as somebody younger, you want to at least pick some goal that you can be working towards, say, in the next six months or the next year. So say you want to be a graphic designer, you're not sure in what type of field, well, pick one and work towards that field just to start off. Um, for example, when I graduated, I was interested in event planning, graphic design, and marketing. And depending on who I was talking to, I might tell them a different goal. Because if I'm talking to somebody, say, within the design industry, it might not make sense to bring up the fact that I'm thinking about going into marketing. But it definitely would make sense to talk about my interest in design. So having these goals and being able to articulate them to people is really important. And then, of course, it's always really important to keep in mind that you should, instead of thinking about yourself, be thinking about what can you offer to other people. And that can range from anything to offering a certain skill set in terms of applying for a specific job, or just offering a, an ear of so, you know, to listen to somebody's story, to learn about their career path, or to listen to an idea or story that they have. So when you're networking and, and meeting people, it's really important that you focus on helping the other person first and thinking about what you might be able to do for them as opposed to what can this person do for me. And I think that what a lot of people have issues with in terms of networking and maybe it makes them feel uh, icky or uncomfortable or like you're using people, well, that's in the context of, you know, thinking me, me, me first. But if you think about networking as mutually beneficial relationships, it just starts to feel normal and beneficial to both parties. So I really like this quote that has to do with that, which is, um, you know, ends with happiness uh, happiest the man who has made the greatest number of people happy. So if you're always thinking about what you can do for others and selfless, selflessly helping people along the way, even if you're early in your career and feel like you don't have much to offer, the benefits will, will come. 
So this section we're going to talk about how to stand out as someone new transitioning from college to the real world or someone new to the year world, <laughs> real world, say a few years out or so. So the first thing you can do is make business cards. It's really, really simple and it may seem a bit outdated, but trust me, it's very helpful and it works, especially when you're networking with older people who still often rely on this form of getting in touch. Having business cards is an easy way to set yourself apart from other recent grads. And you might be thinking, I don't have a job yet, I don't have a title, what am I going to put on a card? Well, it's very, very simple. Just putting your name, your email, your contact information, and then either the, your website or if you have a LinkedIn or you are um, a Twitter personal website, anything basic like that is, uh, is all you need to get a business card. There's a lot of great websites out there ranging from some fancier sites like Moo.com if you're in graphic design or any sort of visual medium, those are great, to your local staples where you can uh, print them on site and those little tear off, uh, tear off sheets. So there's definitely business cards for any budget. So the next thing you can do to stand out is to do your research when you have opportunities. We are so, so lucky to be living in a digital age where we have so much information at our fingertips. Using sites like LinkedIn and of course just simple sites like Google before you have an interview, before you meet someone, when you're applying to a certain job, trust me, will be will set you apart from other job seekers. You'd be really surprised at the number of people who go into interviews not being sure about what the company actually does or what they're working on or the mission and things like that. But even using it beyond a basic level like that, using, say, a site like LinkedIn to look up who you might know in your network who work, works at a company can be really beneficial. For me, uh, an example of doing your research ahead of time, I knew that I really, really wanted to intern at a magazine called Time Out New York Magazine. And so before I applied as a second semester senior, I looked up all the profiles on LinkedIn that I could find of people who used to intern at Time Out to see what they had listed as what they had done while they were there and then what they're doing now. And that way I got a really good idea for, first of all, um, of what I'd actually be doing and it confirmed the fact that yes, this was an internship that I would want. And then second of all, it gave me lots of talking points and really good, um, really good keywords to use in my cover letter and my resume. So of course, looking great online is instrumental to being able to stand out and just even get your foot in the door. So this is an example of a profile uh, or a Google search of a girl named Alexi Nock, who I know who's been to some of our events, and she has great search results. When you look her up, which every employer will look you up if they're having you in for an interview, and you see her Twitter, her LinkedIn, Facebook, and articles that she's written. And she's a journalist major, so this is even more important for her than it is for um, some, say, non-creative roles. I see that we have a lot of folks that aren't necessarily in creative fields, and you might be thinking, well, you know, I don't need to have these sort of sites. Nobody has those in my industry. But if somebody's going to look up your name, you want to make sure it, something professional is coming up as a result. So even if it's just a basic LinkedIn profile, getting that up is, is really important. And there are a lot of different options you can use to create and manage your online presence. So this is an example of a very simple platform called about.me. There's another really similar one called flavors.me, where you don't need to know any code, any, um, any HTML or anything like that. And this really acts as a hub for all your social media networks if you have a handful. It lets you put in a photo, your name, a little blurb, and then all the links to your other platforms, which is great if you have a handful of them. Another example, as I mentioned, is to just have a really knockout LinkedIn profile. Uh, even, especially if you don't have, a, say, a unique name and you're worried about other people coming up in your search results, LinkedIn has a lot of great SEO juice, which means the search results for LinkedIn profiles will show up high in Google. So just making sure you have a very um, clean, filled out LinkedIn profile, good photo, your headline of what you're looking for, your past experience. Try to aim for between 100 to 200 connections when you're just starting out, which 
may sound a little intimidating, but by the time you get through your, your classmates, your professors, and people that you've worked with at various roles, you should be able to get to one or 200 connections uh, pretty quickly. So another great option if you're interested in writing or um, making commentary on a certain industry that you're in is to have a blog. There are tons of free, uh, free ways you can blog and different tools like Tumblr, Blogger, or WordPress, and it's pretty simple to get started. This is really great if you want to really show to your future employers that you're interested in this particular industry or topic. So this is an example of a girl who's a sophomore at Hofstra University and she's extremely passionate about the film industry. So she blogs about movies that she watches, old movies, new movies that have just come out, and also her experiences within the film industry. So for example, she's volunteered at Tribeca Film Festival and had internships and she writes about these on her blog. She even has a, an alias called NYC Film Chick, um, which is the name of her blog and her Twitter handle. And this is a great option for people with very common names to come up with an alias. So this girl's name is actually Erica Mann, which is very generic, but now that she has this uh, great sort of online persona, uh, she makes it easy for people to find her. And these are this blog is something that she can be proud of and show off, include on her resume, include when she's submitting applications, and then it's very clear to the employers that she really wants jobs in this industry. And just to close on the uh, look great online section, I think a lot of people get really overwhelmed with all the different social media networks that are out there. There are tons of them and there's no way you can be on all of them, updating them all the time uh, and connecting with every single person on every network. So the really important thing is to figure out what networks really add value to your job hunt or your career. And so this is just a screenshot of my very first blog. It's very embarrassing to look back on, but the reason I bring it up is because I didn't stress out about becoming the perfect blogger and knowing everything about blogger and everything about writing before I started, because then I would have never got, got started in the first place. Um, I'm really happy that I had a professor who just pretty much forced me into doing it, and by doing it, I learned how to use it and I got better. So with all social networks, I think it's really important to just start them, start using them, try them, experiment, and see what works for you. See what's fun, because you're only going to keep doing things that are fun, and then again, seeing which ones really add value. Um, and I will actually share in our resources afterwards a, a list of some uh, great online platforms that you can use to get started blogging. So one of the reasons I really love blogging um, and another way to stand out is to get on people's radar. So what I mean by that is to just get people to know, know you exist and, and know you're out there and you, that you're listening and you're interested in what they have to say. So this is an example of a blog post that I wrote specifically with the goal in mind to get a reaction from the people that I was writing about. So Evan Roth, Alexis Ohanian, and Christina Zhu are three people that I really, really look up to and I really admire, and they're huge inspirations to me. So I wrote a really simple blog post about one talk from each of them that I really loved and I wanted to share with my connections and friends on, on my blog. And so after writing this simple blog post, couldn't have taken me more than an hour or two, or two to put together, when I tweeted it out, I made sure that I at mentioned each person, which means they got a notification saying, um, Emily's tweeted about you. And not everyone is going to be able to respond to you, to all your tweets and that sort of thing. But the really exciting thing about the age we're living in is that there's always a chance that they will. So as you can see from my screenshot, two out of the three people that I wrote about actually responded and said, thanks cool, um, you know, it was cool to be featured. So just being able to touch base with people who you really admire uh, through these tools is really exciting and something that you can do to stand out. So in this section, we're going to talk about why going out is important. So we just spoke about 
online platforms and how to stand out online, well, all those online connections are really nothing if you're not bridging them into the real world. So IRL, which stands for in real life, real life connections are always going to trump online connections. So no matter how many followers and friends and that sort of thing you have, if you're not being, if you're not uh, using those online connections to create stronger bonds with people offline, it's really not going to do you much good. So the first thing you can do if you're wondering how do I find out about great events is to join meetup.com. New York Creative Interns actually started as a meetup and we're now the largest meetup for interns and recent grads in the country which is really great. Uh, but there is essentially a meetup for everything no matter where you're living. I know we have people from all over the world tuning in right now. So definitely go on Meetup, set up a profile, type in some interests, and join some. Most of them are free to join, and some of, most of them have very low admission fees to actually attend the event. So my recommendation is to join a handful of Meetups, maybe about 10 that seem interesting. And that doesn't mean you have to go to 10 events right away, but just get a feel by checking out the other profiles of people in the group, attend you know a few a month or you know a couple each month and then once you find one where you really click with the people try to consistently attend one meetup because that's going to add a lot of value and a lot of happiness to your uh, the professional and social side uh, of your life because having a group of people where you can go into an event and just know that you're going to see people there that you know is is definitely a great feeling So the other thing you should do is to follow the, closely the companies that you like and you might want to eventually work for and see if they have any events that are going on in the real world. So for example, Tribeca Film Festival is a great company um, and a really good place to be if you're interested in the film industry. And they have a great program for volunteers if you'd like to get involved in the Tribeca Film Festival, which is an excellent way to make great connections, get good experience on your resume, and get a foothold into that specific company in the industry in general. Another example is a magazine, Lucky Magazine. They do a conference for bloggers um, uh, once a year, and you know attending these events is great. If you're low on cash and you need to, um, you know, maybe you can't attend like a, a conference that costs a few hundred dollars, most of the time you're, you might have a chance of getting in if you offer to volunteer at the event. So always keep that open as an option. So another thing you want to do is sign up for industry newsletters. Every industry is different of what's sort of the go-to resource. So do a little Googling, ask around, ask your colleagues, and figure out what lists that you should be on to get talking points for meetings and interviews and to also just stay updated with different events. So lastly, we're going to cover my favorite part of the presentation, which is the art of reaching out. And for this part, I'm definitely going to ask for some participation from the audience. So hopefully you guys can all chime in with your thoughts and comments on this next part of the presentation. So my number one tip for writing cold emails to people where maybe say you're trying to get an informational interview is to write short emails. People that you're reaching out to when you're younger are often going to be very busy, um, most likely people who have the sort of inbox that's always overwhelmed and has lots of unread emails. So if you can be short and to the point, you're doing them a huge favor and you're more likely to get a response. So here's an example of an email that I wrote to someone that I met at South by Southwest, which is a really big conference in Texas, in Austin, Texas, for people interested in digital and social media. So the subject line is, nice meeting you in the Samsung Blogger Lounge. So right off the bat, I'm very specific with how we met, and hopefully that will ring a bell with her and get her to open the email. So it says, hi Amy, my name is Emily. We met in the Samsung Blogger Lounge during South by Southwest. It was a pleasure meeting and hearing about your history with Dig and social media in general. The next time you're in New York City, I'd love to meet up for coffee or drinks and pick your brain. Maybe I could interview you for my blog. Here are some of my past interviews. Let me know. Either way, it was awesome meeting you. Hope the rest of your South by Southwest was a blast. Cheers, and then my name and my signature. 
So that was just a few sen sentences, but hopefully enough to remind her how we met. I was very specific with saying what we chatted about so she knows that I was actually listening and paying attention. And then of course I'm looking to further the relationship by asking her out to coffee or a drink. And another great reason to have a blog is because you can interview people on it, which I've definitely done a handful of times. And a really important phrase in this email is, either way, it was awesome meeting you. By using the phrase either way, you're making it clear that you realize that they might not have time to meet up with you, they might not be interested in meeting up with you, but you are still glad to make the connection. So the next tip is to include context about why and how you're reaching out. So this is an email, uh, this is a Facebook message from someone. It says, Hi Emily, my name is Denise and I'm currently an intern at Flavor Pill. I came across your name in a recent New York Times article about fresh graduates having to take up unpaid internships despite their degree. When I saw your name mentioned and that you interned for Flavor Pill, I immediately looked you up to see the awesome things you were pursuing afterward. I myself am a recent grad who, like many others, have had to settle for more internships after graduating because it's been so difficult to land a full-time job. I'm extremely interested in entering the word of, world of digital media and tech, and it seems like an industry you're very much a part of. Because of that, I was wondering if you'd have 30 minutes or so to spare this week. I'd love to buy you coffee and hear more about your experiences in this industry and the steps you took to get you where you are now. Looking forward to hearing from you. Okay, so here's where let's have a little engagement here. So what are some really good things about this message? So what are, what are some great tips and aspects of this bit of communication? Now, this is a girl that I had never met before. Right, so she gave a backstory about how she found out about me, which is great. She complimented me. It's always nice to be complimented. And uh, it was very clear that she looked me up and she found out what, what we had in common and what's interested for. She was also just asking for advice and not a job. And there was a very immediate clear connection. When she said she was interested, uh, she had interned at Flavor Pill, I saw that immediately thought, well, I know this girl must be semi legit because I interned there as well. And these are great guys, keep them coming. It was great because she offered to buy me a cup of Joe, uh, which is nice. And uh, it was clear that, you know, she was only asking for a little bit of time, which, you know, of course everyone's on the, technically on the same level as, as you, but if you're asking somebody higher up for advice, it's always great if you're, you know, very clear about the fact that you respect their time. So what are some critiques of this message? Um, what could she have maybe done differently about the way that she reached out to me? So it is a little bit long. I think she could have condensed it a little bit to make it a little more concise. Okay, so there's one big thing. Right, okay, Katie Duran got it. So she could have used a more professional media platform. She messaged me on Facebook, which is probably the least professional social media platform you could touch base with somebody on. Um, and a lot of times, uh, especially if you're in a creative industry, people have LinkedIn, they have Twitter, uh, they have websites with their email. I personally have my email pretty much plastered all over the internet. So if you can, you should use Facebook as a very last resort, not only because it's a more personal uh, uh, platform, but because if you message somebody and you're not connected, your message will actually go to this other section in Facebook messages, so a lot of people might not even see it. So I would very highly recommend not reaching out to people through Facebook and trying to see if you can find any other um, method. Um, Arif also said more exclamation points. So you bring up a good point. Um, I used to write a lot of exclamation points. You could see from my first email it had one at the end of pretty much every sentence, which looking back is a little embarrassing. In terms of using exclamation points or smiley faces, I'm now in the camp of don't use them as a f in your first method of outreach, but if somebody replies to you and uses smiley faces or exclamation points a lot, 
kind of follow their lead in how much you use them because you want to make sure that you don't sound very dry if they sound very excited with exclamation points but it also can be a bit more professional without using them. All right. So the third tip, of course, is to be respectful. So this was a Facebook message from somebody I had met at a presentation uh, at a school similar to this one. And his message said, I'm setting up event, an event at the blank. I'm making it for students. I want to know if you're free later today to talk about it. Maybe you could help me strategize as I have never held an event at this place before. So what's bad about this method of contact? Okay, they spelled your wrong, which of course it's always good to spell check and have correct grammar. There's no greeting. It's very demanding. Um, messaging someone and saying, can I speak later today, is, is a little uh, presumptuous. Yeah, that's a good word, Claire. Uh, there's no formal introduction. Um, didn't say my name. They're using a smiley face. Great, guys. Yeah, so, I mean, these are all things that, you know, I read this email. I mean, well, Facebook message, which there's another thing. Uh, you know, again, messaging through Facebook is not a great method to contact people in a professional setting. Um, I was really turned off by it. I did eventually speak with this person, but I put it off and... Um, yeah, if you're going to um, reach out to someone, again, you want to respect their time. You want to make it pretty clear that you realize that they're doing you a favor and um, come in with, with, uh, with good expectations and, and, and not super high expectations um, and be professional. Uh, you know, in creative industries, it's often seen as uh, more informal, which is great, and it's true, but it's always good to also err on the side of being too formal uh, when you're starting out a relationship with someone. So here's another message. This was an email. The subject line was um, their name and then internship inquiry, and it says, Dear Emily, my name is blank and Creative Interns was referred to me by my brother, who's an ambassador at the Behance Network. I am 16 years old and attend St. Joseph High School in Staten Island, New York. I can easily adapt to any environment and possess a very positive and optimistic attitude. If there are any internship programs that I may be of service to, please let me know. I am eagerly waiting your response. Thank you for your time. So what are some good things about this uh, email? What are some good aspects of this uh, message? Right, it's very respectful. All right, so the last part of the art of reaching out is follow-up. Follow-up is so key to success in your professional life. So this is an example of an email that I sent to a woman who I wanted to speak at one of our New York Creative Interns events. So we're constantly throwing events where we invite anywhere from one to four people to talk about their experiences uh, within a particular industry or on a topic. So this is a woman that I had known from college and we worked together at um, Hofstra University's admissions. So she did, I knew that she knew who I was and that she would remember me. So we got in a little bit of a pickle where we had it, someone drop out of an event last minute. So I sent this event, uh, this email to her the day before the event. And the subject line read, invite to speak on panel tomorrow. And then in parentheses, we used to work at admissions together. So very, very specific subject line there. I'm telling her exactly what I'm emailing her about. I want you to speak at an event and why she knows me. We used to work together. So it says, um, Hi Ariana, uh, hope all is well. I know this is very much last minute, but we were wondering if you'd be interested in speaking, uh, being a panelist at our event interview to the top tomorrow at this address. I thought of you because I know as a Hofstra ambassador, you're a great public speaker and I've been following your career and you've been doing really great things. Either way, we'd love to have you speak at a future event, even if you're not able to attend this one. Uh, you can call me here, and thank you so much for considering more details below. 
So below is where I put all the nitty gritty about where the event was, the other speakers, sample questions, and that sort of thing. But the beginning just focused on really the basic information that she needed. So I had sent this email July 25th. I got a response from her very quickly, I think probably the next day, and she was unable to make it. Uh, again, her name is actually in, uh, Ariana uh, Finlazian, and she is a community manager for Marina Meher Communications, where she does social media for CoverGirl. So I knew I wanted to have her speak at an event. So instead of just taking that no and walking away, I emailed her at least five more times, inviting her to different New York Creative Interns events. And it wasn't until October where she was actually able to be a speaker at our event that we had at Birchbox headquarters. So this is just shows how important uh, it is to follow up, number one, because sometimes people are just busy. They might be really overwhelmed at the moment. You might have reached out to them in a time of personal crisis or maybe they're on vacation. I consider sending a first email pretty much the same as sending no email at all. You always have to follow up no matter what it is. And of course then you have to play a line of being persistent and then at one point just saying, okay, this person just is probably not interested, but at least you always want to give uh, your emails at least one more chance in addition to the first email that uh, you send. Uh, Mark from Ithaca said he actually sets up a calendar to remember to stay in touch with past intern bosses. Absolutely. Sending a link to a boss or a past colleague every so often just to stay in touch tweeting at them or asking to meet up for coffee for people you really, really want to maintain great relationships to are great little ways to stay on people's radars. And then, of course, that brings me to connecting in multiple places. So you're not going to be able to go on a million coffee dates, a million informational interviews, and that's where that bridging between online and offline is so important. So for people who are really closest to you in terms of mentors, you want to be able to try to meet with them a couple times a year or you know a few times every so every few months um, but you won't be able to do that with everyone so you want to connect in multiple places by staying in touch on Twitter LinkedIn through email um, and then also trying to go to events where you know people are going to be who you want to stay connected with uh, and also it's always great to try to go to events where you know there'll be a group of people you want to connect with so you're not just maintaining one relationship, but you're maybe starting a bunch of new ones in addition to maintaining some old ones. And of course, you want to use the college card as much and um, as much as possible while you still can. So if you're in college or you just graduated, people who are older who will be able to share advice and insight they respect that. They respect the struggle. They respect how hard it is to find a job. And they were in your position, you know, not so long ago. So always keep in mind that most people truly want to help you share their advice. And so taking advantage of that as a, a younger person and a younger creative, there's nothing wrong with that. So in conclusion, to really be a hustler, you want to be helpful, get noticed, go out, and reach out. And of course, all of these things are hard. There's a lot to do. It's a lot of upkeep. Maintaining relationships is difficult. It takes time and effort, but it's truly, truly helpful and the best thing that you can do in your career. So with this great uh, Skillshare platform, uh, in addition to this talk, we actually have the chance to share work with each other, share feedback, and share tips and insight on the Skillshare platform. So these are some of the assignments that uh, I'm going to share with you now that we can all um, uh, do as projects together within the, within the Skillshare platform. So one, uh, one homework assignment is to follow three companies or people who you'd love to connect with, get an informational interview with, or work for. And you can do this by signing up for a newsletter, following someone on Twitter, following their blog, etc. The next challenge, which is a little bit bigger, is to try one new online platform. As I mentioned, there are so many out there. There are new ones coming up every couple of weeks. Uh, but the really fun thing is to just try them out 
and give them a shot. So try to pick one platform that you've always considered joining or that you've heard is uh, really important within your particular industry. Try it out, put some effort into it, and take some time to try to maintain that and see if it works for you and if you enjoy it. So the second thing, is, or the third thing, is to find two events that you can attend in your city uh, this month. So join Meetup, sign up for newsletters, go to NewYorkCreativeInterns.com slash events, and pick two events where you feel like you can meet other great people, find potential mentors, and find job leads, or you know just have an interesting time. And don't limit these events necessarily to purely professional events. For example, if you want to get into the film industry, maybe there's a uh, indie movie theater in your neighborhood where you can see screenings, or if you're into the art industry or design industry, maybe you can go to um, a, a sketchathon or something like that. There's a good chance if you're going to something that's related to a professional interest that you might meet people within that industry there. And then the last thing, which can definitely take a lot of time and you want to make sure you can be really genuine about is to write one email uh, to somebody, maybe it's a cold email, which by cold it means they have no idea who you are, or if you can um, get a referral uh, through somebody by seeing maybe if you're connected on LinkedIn or that sort of thing, and write one email to someone asking for the chance to pick their brain, either through an informational interview, um, IRL, or maybe if you're in different cities, um, either via phone or Skype or something like that. Uh, again, just as a follow-up, a, a little more about New York Creative Interns. For those of you who missed it, we are uh, I'm Emily Mithner, founder and president of New York Creative Interns. We're dedicated to helping young creatives figure out their dream career and help them take steps towards getting that. And we do it through events like this, online and offline in New York City. And our biggest event that we do is our full day conference called Find and Follow Your Passion. And we'll be doing that conference again on April 6th. I'll send you guys all a discount. And that's a full day of hearing from amazing creative professionals from the coolest companies in New York City talking about how they got where they are, offering this type of event um, advice. It's an amazing event to make great connections with not only these creative professionals, but other young creatives your age who could end up being business partners, colleagues, and collaborators. So again, I'll be sending a discount to you guys for those of you who uh, are interested in attending that. We've had people come as far as Texas, Canada, and California, Boston, uh, to come to this conference. So even if you're far away, it could be a great investment. And we'll also keep you updated with our other events and our job board and, and uh, opportunity listings through our newsletter. And uh, that discount to the conference will be good until Friday. So um, it is uh, one of those uh, ex ones of the ex exploration. Uh, but again, I'll be sending lots of info in the follow-up. Looking forward to chatting with you in the discussion on Skillshare. And after a week, I'll go in. I'll look and see who's put the most effort into their projects and pick two people to do a free one-on-one -on -one consulting with me. So uh, it was great meeting you guys, and I l look forward to keeping connected with you all and chatting with you on Skillshare. So thanks so much, and have a great night.